sorry to trouble you at home, ma'am, but we've just picked up a bystander triple nine on an active abduction of a young female in the Moss Heath area. We've been looking for him for months. We're going to get this bastard, yeah? Michael Farmer, I'm arresting you on suspicion of abduction and attempted murder. Is this you, Michael? The 24-year-old man has been charged. Does a young boy might go to prison because of a crime he didn't commit. Huntley's definitely hiding something about how the case against Farmer was handled. What? I don't know. No. There's the man you should be looking for up there. New gaffer's ready. For those who don't know me, I'm DCI Ian Buckles. I'm now running Operation Trapdoor. I do not want to pull my officer off this job. The world and his wife would know who's to blame. That's me, sir, if you're interested. Don't leave before we make an appointment. You all right? I need to go back to work. What have you got against Michael Farmer except him being retarded enough for you to fry? <laughs> Fingertips were amputated post-mortem. So we're surmising that Tim tried to grab a handful of his assailant. That's what we've worked up, Bloods Butter. I had to reference KLG 13. A trace of foreign DNA was found on Leonie Collisdale's partial torso. It matches to Tim Ifield. Team briefing, one minute. Team briefing. Officer meeting room, boss. Incident room. Uh, I've been thinking we should appeal for more witnesses in the Michael Farmer case. As he's been charged, perhaps they've decided it's not necessary coming forward. I'm um, sorry. Uh, Ian, join us. Joint team briefing, Operation Trapdoor and Tim Ifield's murder. I'm not being funny, Ross, but what are you up to? Cleared this was Assistant Chief Constable Hilton. Well, no one said a word to me. Sorry. Kate, um, I promised ACC Hilton complete discretion. I don't want him being embarrassed by any of this getting back to East Mids. Up trapdoor. Although Michael Farmer's been charged, we're still dealing with recent developments. Just there, guys. Namely, the finding of body parts that have been matched to our second victim, Leonie Collisdale. I cannot emphasize confidentiality enough. You are not to discuss outside of this inquiry that Leonie Collisdale's body parts bore traces of Tim Ifield's DNA. We've never found any connection in the phone records between Tim Ifield and Leonie Collisdale. So we're looking for one between Tim and Michael Farmer. Maybe they were accomplices. Or maybe Farmer had nothing to do with Leonie Collisdale's murder, despite being charged with it. Ian, there's mountains of evidence. Mum, I've been running a check on the tools found in the flat. May I? Sorry. No, please. Thank you, Jodie. They appeared brand new, the tools. So I've been looking into recent purchases in the local area. And I found this on CCTV from the night of Tim's murder. Sir. For God's sake, I'm busting. A tiny knot in it. What went on in that? Since when's it my job to do yours? If you put the report on my desk there, I'll be sure to take a look at it. I do that so you sound like a dick. Yeah, well, this dick's no grass for AC12. He's a DCI. And I didn't get there by sticking my neck out. I got there by letting the other buggers. Maybe that's why you're still a DS. Well, I wish I could shed more light, but I'm a bit stuck at the moment. I don't want to push Huntley too hard and make her suspicious. No disrespect to Kate, sir. It's no fault of hers. We can't sit on our hands. Tim Ifield was police staff, was implicated in a murder and got murdered himself. Ross Huntley's reinstatement puts her in the box seat to manipulate the inquiry just like she did with Michael Farmer. We've got to get in the game. Which will put Huntley on a guard. My undercover's a much more subtle approach, sir. I've never disputed on the blunt instrument. But this is bigger now than just being about Huntley. I'm oh, sorry, kid, but Steve's right. We can't exist off the crumbs off Huntley's table. 
Our informant has been killed. I won't rest until I find out the who, the how, and the why. Sir. Opening a wider inquiry will give us access to all the evidence Huntley's team's been gathering. Right. Well, back to the cold face, the period. Unless you've got some more eggs sucking tips for your granny. Sir. Really, Ted, there's no need, as you were. Thank you, sir. I'll come straight to the point, if I may. I'm opening a full spectrum inquiry into the murder of Timothy Ifield. And as per protocol, there will be no reciprocity regarding DCI Huntley's investigation. I also registered that my considered counsel in respect of DCI Roseanne Huntley has been uh, disregarded. Now I see why you're upping the ante. Challenge AC-12 at your peril. What? You didn't reinstate Huntley because you were worried that Michael Farmer's defense would make capital of the fact that the senior investigating officer was replaced? It was thanks to Ross Huntley's diligence we detected Ifield's involvement in one of the prostitute murders. I'd say she's earned a second chance. And my team is intent to give Michael Farmer a second chance, and we shall see which one of us is right, sir, when we have access to all the evidence. Oh. Officers, go to your desks. You'll each be questioned by an AC-12 caseworker. You'll each be obliged to surrender all materials relating to Operation Trapdoor and the investigation into the murder of Timothy Ifield. Failure to comply will be a breach of your duties and responsibilities under police conduct regulations and may lead to a misconduct charge under said regulations. Okay. If you've got plans, cancel them. This takes as long as it takes. File keywords are trap door and I feel. Guard the door. No one goes in or out without my say so. Thank you for your cooperation. All relevant files are to be surrendered for copying by AC12 officers. Yeah. T10, cheers. Okay. T11, I have that. You're all familiar with this image. This is what Huntley's team's been keeping from you. CCTV vid cap of the car park where DIY Super saw at 1933 on the 17th of March. That's the night before Tim Ifield sent his final text message. Inside the store, 1949, the same evening. Now, he's got rid of the balaclava, so it's not to arouse suspicion. But he keeps his head down at all times, he's put on a baseball cap. Unfortunately, this is the best image they've got. Crime scene photograph from Timothy Ifield's flat. Showing tools resemble those being purchased on the evening of 17th of March. This DIY store is located less than half a mile from Tim's flat. So this is Tim Ifield's murderer? Or oh, one detail from Tim's post-mortem that was overlooked. I reckoned at the time it was an incidental find. It's a number of dark wool fibers were detected in Tim's hair and nose. He was wearing the balaclava? Unfortunately, none of these items of clothing, the balaclava, the jacket or gloves, were found in the search of Tim's flat, so we can't link them to Tim with 100% certainty. Well, what's our level of certainty regarding this person's ID? Well, his head's down in all the images, so facial recognition software hasn't been able to provide us with a match. But body matching gives a 90% probability it's Tim Ifield. So balaclava, man, could be Tim Ifield? Yes, sir. That's what we now have to consider. The DIR, I am showing Michael Farmer a photograph of Timothy Ifield. Michael, do you recognize this gentleman? For the DIR, the interviewee is not responding. Michael, are you sure?
Farmer denied any connection with Tim Highfield. We'll say we looked through all of Farmer's phone records and there's never been any contact between the two of them. Sorry, boss. I was wondering, could there be another explanation, a simpler one? And what could that be? That Tim was framing Michael Farmer. It's a valid thought, Neil, don't get me wrong. I just think it's a bit much to ask us to discount the massive evidence against Michael Farmer. It's mad to think Farmer's not guilty. Yes. There is one thing we can be sure of. What's that, Neil? Whoever killed Tim Ifield, it wasn't Michael Farmer. He was in prison. We find Tim Ifield's murderer, we crack this case. Absolutely. Thanks, Neil. Jody. You're on ship to Polk Avenue in the morning. You need to get some kit, mate. I could say the same. Tim's balaclava, man. Why'd he come to us saying Michael Farmer's not guilty? He wouldn't. He'd be content to let Ross Huntley send down Michael Farmer for the crimes he was committing. Instead, he came to us worried Huntley got the wrong man. And more than that, he accused her of deliberately protecting the real offender. What? The CCTV gives us Tim's murder timeline. Tim's alive and kicking out and about on the night the 17th. The following morning was when Hannah Reznikova called around the flat for cleaning and wasn't let in. Correct. Didn't you report Huntley called in sick one morning? that no one could get hold of her. Yeah. Well, that was the morning of the 18th, the morning after the last time Tim was seen alive. A bit of a coincidence, Huntley goes AWOL right in the murder timeline. What are you saying exactly? That it makes no sense for Tim to be balaclava man. That his accusation that Huntley was protecting the real offender could still be true, that Huntley's conduct was suspicious around the time of Tim's murder. Look, I don't know how it all fits, but the timing does. So maybe we should start thinking the unthinkable. Ross Huntley isn't just involved in framing Michael Farmer. She's also somehow involved in Tim's murder. Well, you're right about one thing. That is the unthinkable. It's starting to feel like harassment, dear Sarnet. Harassment, anti-corruption inquiry, tomato, tomato. PC Bindra. Mum, if we may, we're taking your mobile phone in evidence. Yeah, you can't do that without an authority. Jody, it's a police issue device, not my own personal property. They're at liberty to examine it without authority. Thank you, Mum. I've got nothing to hide. Thank you very much, Mum. You're at liberty to collect a replacement device at your convenience. Problem, Frida. Someone's come forward. From the appeal you asked us to put out. She didn't at the time because she didn't realise the significance. She's got a story that fits Michael Farmer's offences for location and date. Great. Brilliant. Is Jodie still here? She's finished for the day, ma'am. Shall I get Neil? It needs to be a female detective. Sorry, ma'am. Couldn't help overhearing, but I'm PIP level two and video interview trained re vulnerable victims of crime. Okay. Let's see what you're made of. Hello, my name's Detective Sergeant Kate Flynn. I'm one of the detectives looking into the attacks on a number of local women. Frida says you might have some new information that can help with our inquiries. Oh, this happened a while ago. That's OK. What happened? I was walking home from college through the estate. What happened to you, Melanie? A weird guy started talking to me. Weird how? He kept talking even though I wasn't answering. I just kept walking faster. 
then, then you grabbed hold of me. Uh, I'm sorry we have to keep asking you these questions, but what else did he do to you? He said I was pretty. He wanted to kiss me. He wanted me to come back to his house. What did you do? I just ran as fast as I could, and then and when I looked back, he wasn't there anymore. Did he give a name? I don't remember any name. Why didn't you report this at the time? I suppose I just wanted to put it all behind me. Look, I know this has been really difficult for you. And you've been a big help. What we need next from you is to help identify who this man was. I've, I've told you. I don't know who he is. We'd set up an identity parade where we can show you video footage. We need a positive ID that can stand up in court. I'd have to go to court? No, no way. I know it's a really big thing for you to have to do. No, no, I, I, I'm not doing it. Li no li way. Listen, we'll start with an identity parade. <laughs> I can't, no way. It's I all can't. done by video. You can't see I it. I never would have come in if anyone had told me. He could do this to someone else. We, we need your help. I wasn't expecting all this. Melanie, he's a very dangerous man. He has to be stopped. And the only way is for a court to put him behind bars. Please, can you help us do that, Melanie? Brave girl. Well done. Nate. Sarge. There are no suspicious entries in DCI Huntley's call history or any suspicious texts or emails during the murder timeline. All the calls from when she left Polk Avenue Station are from family members in her contact list. What about GPS data? Well, unfortunately, the phone was switched off for a large chunk of time, but the last GPS location on the 17th and first on the 18th, the DCI Huntley's home address, consistent with her story of being off sick. Sorry, Sarge. Every piece of evidence that Rose Huntley's got on Tim Arfield's murder, we go through it. Every piece, no matter how small. Funnily enough, that's what we've all been doing, Sarge. is going to take you through the video identification process. You'll see nine unrelated men of a similar age and appearance. All the videos are pre-recorded and none of the men are in the police station. They can't see you, can't hear you. None of them know about who's going to watch the videos. Any resemble the man that attacked you, tell PC Naya. Okay. Ready to start? Mm -hmm. uh, Melanie, as we explained earlier, we're not allowed to stay in the room with you. It has to be an officer unfamiliar with the suspect. Each suspect is numbered, and you'll be shown each suspect twice. At the end, I'll ask you if you can make a positive identification. Please, take a seat. Seems dead nervous. Melanie was able to make a positive ID. That's brilliant, Melanie. Well done. Well done. Mom, Melanie. really great work, Kate. You delivered. Yep. 
There's one reason why we do this job. That is it. We protect life. I have to inform you, Michael, that the witness was able to positively identify you from the video. Prior to the video identification, you denied the witness's allegations. I didn't mean to upset her. You're now admitting the allegations. Michael. Sorry. Yes. I'm sorry. You tell her I'm sorry. Yes, we can do that, Michael, but first I need to ask you what you intended to do to this woman. Why did you want her to come back to your house? I was lonely. Following a conversation with a senior prosecutor, I have the authority to charge you with the following offence. Attempting to cause a person to engage in sexual activity without consent. This charge will be included in the charges against you when you appear in court, namely for the murder of Baswinda Kaur, the murder of Leonie Collersdale, the kidnapping and attempted murder of Hannah Reznikova. Do you understand these charges against you? Please answer. Yes. Time is now 10.20 and we are switching off the machine. I'd like some time alone with my client. I think we need to discuss the best way forward. Yes, of course. Michael, the charges against you are going to be hard to fight. We can try and fight them, or we can consider the best way to reduce the overall time you end up serving in prison. For Christ's sake. All right, everybody. Look, just calm down, OK? Steve, I get why you're pissed off, but the ID process was by the boss. Witnesses are eager to please. Non-verbal cues from the officers involved led the witness to identify Michael Farmer, whether she recognised him or not. Yeah, well, she did recognise him. Look, throw an accusation at someone like Michael, the poor bastard starts to believe he's guilty. All right, you made your point. So we're supposed to be exonerating Farmer, not sending him down for longer. No, we're meant to be investigating Ros Huntley, Operation Trapdoor and the murder of Tim Ifield. Look, Huntley shut you out, so you played up to, to get your undercover back. Well, that's not what happened at all. But... All right, enough, the both of you. Now, look. If there are concerns regarding the accuracy of this identification, legitimate concerns, Kate, I might add, then we can take you out, reveal you as an undercover officer, and can make them repeat the ID parade. Sir, what's happened's happened. The fact is I've finally gained Huntley's trust. By I... colluding in the framing of an innocent man. D.S. Arnott. Whether this undercover continues or not is a matter entirely between D.S. Fleming and myself. Therefore, you are dismissed. Sir. Sir, I don't know if Michael Farmer's guilty or innocent. None of us do. My job is to find out if Ros Huntley has committed process corruption and I've just had a massive breakthrough. I was shut out and now I'm in. All right. Very good. Carry on. Thank you, sir. See ya. How long do you reckon before Farmer changes his plea to guilty? Oof. I've got a tennis as within the week. Ooh, don't count the chickens. <laughs> <laughs> Hi. <laughs> I hope you don't mind, Mum. I was on the email. You're very welcome. And thanks for your contribution. Mm -hmm. Kate! Yes. Oh, I'm glad I could help. And listen, Mum, I just want to apologise again for how things started with us. I was a bit of a bull in a china shop. Not quite that delicate. <laughs> All right. Mm. What have I missed? Getting, Getting around, around him. him. Oh, great. You fancy another? No, I'm driving. Oh, shame. I'll just get mine then. Get straight if anyone wants one. Uh, maybe. <laughs> now, Kate, um, could I ask you a deeply personal question? Do you like curry? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, of course I like curry. I'm going to book the Dilshad. Are you in? Yeah, definitely. Unfortunately, this means you're going back. Sorry, Mum. Despite all the leads we've shared, there's no link to your East Mids missing person. Don't see much point in you continuing your succumbent. Yeah. Enjoy the party.
How can I help you, dear Sonnet? Tim Ifield's DNA was found on Leonie Collisdale's body. You disclosed that to Farmer Solicity, yeah? As you know, DS Arnott, we're only obliged to carry out full disclosure prior to the trial. Meaning you're counting on there not being one? Well, we do in the defences, Jeff. Kate. Okay. No, just your own. Night, Mark. You're sleeping well while innocent man rots in jail. Wanker. Who does he think he is? A tosser. That's it. All right. All right. Ross didn't come for the curry, so I did an early swerve. Got your favourite, though. Lamb Madras. Got the plates. What's the state of Huntley's marriage? I get the impression she's a boring suburban mum. <clears throat> All the calls to Huntley's phone on the night of the 17th, morning of the 18th, were from family members. Now, the phone was off and they eventually came through his voicemails. On the 17th, there's a call from the home landline at 1806 to her mobile. It only lasts a few seconds, Miss Dal, maybe. Yeah, but then they try again a couple of hours later. One of the kids asking if it's OK to order in a Domino's. If she's telling the truth, by then her family should have known her whereabouts. The phone's home, she isn't. The Italians reopened. That's good. Yeah. Go there on Friday or Saturday night if you fancy it. I'm working Friday. I think Slope's got something Saturday. Oh, Saturday then. Just me and you. Sounds great. I haven't been there for ages. Sorry. I'm shattered. You've been under so much pressure at work. Do you want to talk about it? Thanks. Just want to nod off. Okay. Yes, this is our purpose. Mr. Arnold, Nick Huntley, come on through. Keep enough for a tea or a coffee? Uh, I'm fine, thank you. Excuse the state. We're in the process of moving floors. No worries. Right. How can I help you? Legal advice. Well, you've come to the right place. Suppose a man was found dead and a suspect in the murder inquiry deliberately left their phone at home to avoid GPS tracking. What would you advise the suspect? We practice corporate law. Hypothetically, what would you advise the suspect? I can refer you to a colleague at a criminal law firm. No, it's not me I'm talking about. It's your wife. Yes, Arnold. 
Where was your wife on the night of the 17th through to the morning of the 18th of March? Um, <clears throat> right. Presumably you are aware of the law regarding the compatibility of a spouse. Well, normally the spouse is the one corroborating the alibi, not undermining it. Right. I mean, you are disputing your wife's alibi. Wait, no. Your wife claims she was home the 17th and 18th, recovering from illness. Before I talk to you any more, I would like to have a chat with my wife. Is there anything else I can help you with today, officer? Mr. Huntley, unable to confirm wife's whereabouts on the 17th slash 18th. No, I didn't say that. Mr. Huntley denies the above. I need to talk to Ros. I need you to talk to me, sir, within 48 hours. Better is voluntary than I have to come looking. Yes, Arnold. Why is he asking these questions? Oh, not. It's a work thing. It's routine. Well, he said somebody had died. Didn't seem like routine. It's my work, Nick. So we're not discussing it? Hmm? Since when? There are certain sensitive aspects of my work that are inappropriate to share outside the service communication loop. You know that. Well, it didn't stop him interviewing me. They're anti-corruption. They make a mountain out of every molehill. Anti-corruption? What have you done? Nothing. Why, um... Why didn't you let me know where you were? I told you I left my phone at home and I couldn't call. You were at work. It was a specialist op. Not many people knew about it. Well, it seemed like no one knew about it. He had the impression that you were at home, ill. Ross, were you with someone? I love you, and I've always trusted you. But for the sake of our marriage and for the sake of our kids, I need the truth. AC-12 are investigating one of my cases. Looking for an angle to discredit me. Internal politics, 100% total bollocks. Sorry they involved you, but that is their kind of mind game. Oh, and the bastards get away with it because they claim they're enforcing professional standards. Still haven't answered my question. Steve. Wait. 
Yes, Steve Arnott, DC, James Desperate. I'm putting you two together on the Huntley Inquiry. Uh, OK. Any questions? No? Good. Carry on. Actually, it's Jamie, not James. Right. Well, uh, it's good to be working with you, Steve. All right, call you Steve. We'll see. Yeah. I thought me and Kate were doing fine, sir. Well, of course you are, but there's just so much more ground to cover now. And you know, the less Kate is here, the safer it is for her. Sir. Besides, if you're going to step up, I'm going to need you to train up a new investigator. Kind of one of my inspectors gallivanting all over town, chasing every last lead that's going. Go on. Jamie. Hi, Monique. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. First day. Yeah? yeah. How are you getting on? Yeah, good. So when's it due? What, are you saying I look pregnant? Uh, no, no, I was, um... <laughs> of course I am. <laughs> End of June. <laughs> Tim's downstairs in here, but the nurse. We ought to have another go at finding out if she saw anyone suspicious. Mm. What's going on here? Just getting on with things while you're at. Great. Mum, we've looked right back over all cases Tim was involved in. Convictions that hinged on forensic evidence where maybe the offender held a grudge. A violent offender recently released. And? Nothing. Nothing. <laughs> Can you stop that? See, there's a lot of theories kicking around here and a lack of basic coppering. Like, Tim's killer had to get in that flat and he had to get out. Who was in the area? Who was in that street? Who was hanging around outside that flat? Find him, and that's the whole case. Stop bleeding rocket science. Jess, how are you? <laughs> Hilarious, mate. We already know who was there. Who? Anna Resnikova was the last person known to have had contact with the victim. We need to talk to her again. Please do it. Mum. Boss. We will be. I'll make another note. Uh, I hope it's not too much hassle coming in. The hours you work. Deal. That's a good job you didn't come in in your uniform. Some of that, like, you know. Oh. All right. You're right, Sarge. Uh, did you meet Gemma? Tim's downstairs neighbor. Yeah. Hi again. Hi. You okay? I'm fine. So we're just going over some details. Now we've got a better handle on Tim's timeline. Right. Polk Avenue interviewed Gemma immediately after Tim's body was found, but she said they haven't been in touch since, so... OK. Uh, as we were saying, we're now focusing our inquiry on the night of the 17th, morning of the 18th. So we're hoping the fact we can be more precise will help focus your memory. Um, 17th, I was on a late, so I would have got home around 11 if we didn't go on somewhere. We, um... Do Malibu a couple of times a month. Oh, that's a cool club. I got in around 11. And when did you next leave your flat? The next day I had a late, so I would have had a lie in maybe till lunchtime. Did you hear any kind of disturbance that night? No. Right. Go back to when you got in, 11 p.m., night the 17th. No, actually, I did go out, but I came home first because I forgot to bring a change of clothes and I called a taxi. And I thought he was already there, but they normally send a text. Mm. So I realised that it, it couldn't be mine. Great. Great. So you witnessed a cab outside the flats around 11pm on the night of the 17th? I think it was a cab. Can you describe the driver? Um, no, it was dark and I didn't really look. I'm sorry. Come on, you kidding? You've been a star. Look, anything else jogs your memory, you give me a call, OK? Anytime. Sure. I'll show you out. Just down there. Maybe I'll see you in Malibu. If this leap pans out, I'll buy you a drink. Cheers, Gemma. Do you have a sec? Yeah. Um, the cab. 
cab driver. He was white. Um, that's all I could tell. I, I just didn't want to sit in front of Jamie, just in case it sounded like I thought all cabbies had to be black. That's fine. Thank you. It's a bit crap Huntley's team never re-interviewed Gemma. Huntley's deliberately leading the inquiry in the wrong direction. Tim Ifield is in Balaclava, man. And there's another suspect, and he's still out there. So let's be the ones to find him. Good. Gemma said the driver was white. I'll get money to run cab companies for bookings around that time, rule out any ME signing names. He's hoping you'll owe her a drink. That's an interview technique. I'd never mess about with a witness. I know some of the blokes do, but it's a bit... Desperate, do you know what I mean? She had such. Am I in trouble? Thank you for coming in to talk to us again, Hannah. This is a voluntary interview. You're free to leave at any time. But I told you everything I know. Since your previous interview, we've uncovered some new evidence we'd like to put to you. The DIR, I'm showing Miss Reznikova item reference GHF9, showing a DIY store car park and a figure wearing a balaclava. Yes, he looks like the man who attacked me. According to your witness statement, on the evening of the 9th of March, you were set upon by a man wearing a balaclava who forced you into his vehicle and transported you to an address on the Borough Grove estate belonging to Michael Farmer. Yes, Michael Farmer. We know this can't be Michael Farmer. He was in custody at the time. We believe this must be Timothy Ifield. For the DIR, I'm showing Ms. Reznikova item reference JHF10, showing the same man purchasing a number of power tools. No. I don't know anything about this at all. I know. We wonder if you have any idea at all why Timothy Ifield would be dressed exactly as you've described the man who abducted you five nights earlier. I... I don't know. Tim Ifield was the police forensic coordinator present on the scene when you were rescued from Michael Farmer's house. You told us he came into the cafe where you worked and asked you to become his cleaner. Are you certain you didn't recognise him? I had never seen him before. He'd seen you. He knew exactly who you were. No alarm bells rang? No. No. Come on. When you do go to the flat, you get a weird text telling you not to come in. Still, you don't think there's something funny going on? No. No. I am telling the truth. Would you like to take a break, Hannah? No, I'm not a criminal. No one's saying you are, Hannah. A waitress doesn't earn very much. Neither does a cleaner. You needed the job, so maybe you should set your suspicions aside. No! But you needed the job? Yes. Well, Hannah, our inquiries say you didn't chase him up at all. Not one call or text from you to Timothy Ifield's registered mobile phone after the 18th. Why were you so happy to lose his business? I just didn't know what to do, okay? I didn't know what was happening. Well, you were the last person we know of to visit Tim's flat. Maybe that's where you recognised him. <laughs> no! Hannah, you... Are you sure you wouldn't prefer to take a break? We don't mind. We're just confused. For the DIR, DCI Huntley's entered the room. Farida. No. For the DIR, DCI Huntley, I've taken PC Jatry's seat. The interviewee does not appear oppressed by my arrival. Hannah? Yes, I'm fine. Thank you, Hannah. Let me explain. Since we first interviewed you, certain things have become part of our working hypothesis regarding how Timothy Ifield met his death. Forensic evidence very strongly suggests he was wearing a white forensic oversuit at the time of his death. Fibres in his hair and nose suggest he'd been wearing a balaclava. He was in possession of not only a number of power tools, but also a set of kitchen knives. As a woman, I can well imagine the level of terror if I were to encounter that situation. I wonder if a woman went to Tim's flat. She entered. Tim appeared as I've described. This woman would quite rightly be in fear for her life. This man clearly intended to assault her, kill her, dismember her body, if she put up a fight, she would not have committed a crime. This woman was already traumatized by a recent abduction. It was self-defense. I didn't do what you say. This woman was terrified. If she confessed, would a court believe her? She didn't have long to make up her mind. 
She could lose her job, her family. She might be deported, but she knows how to clean. I didn't do it. Help us to help you, Hannah. Let us search your home. Let us rule you out as a suspect. You want to search my flat? Stand by a specialist team. They won't damage anything. Anything they need to take away will be returned to you. No. You're refusing to permit us entry to your flat. I haven't done anything wrong. I'm sorry, Hannah. We really need to search your flat. Jodie, section 18. Do it. DCI Huntley, leaving the room. Hannah Resnikova, I am arresting you in connection with the murder of Timothy Ifield. This arrest means the necessity to under code G for police and criminal evidence act and aiding the prompt and effective investigation of an offence permitting a lawful search of your address as part of our inquiry. Info on an item of evidence from Tim Ifield's flat, KRG 13. Forensic samples were taken on the 23rd of March, stored overnight and then sent to the lab the following morning. She went to the forensic office. What's she up to? I spoke to an FI after she'd gone. Kate was asking for details about item reference KRG 13. You know what that is? That's the isolated blood spatter deposit found at Tim's flat. The FI who had handled it had mistakenly wrote KRG 30 and then corrected it to KRG 13. And what did they make of that? Oh, it was noted, but no concerns have been raised. Sounds like a slip of the pen. Yeah. What do you reckon she's up to, Mum? <sighs> Ambitious DS, that's all. She wants to impress her gaffer back at East Mids. Not that there's anything wrong with ambition. No, um. We should do a drink soon. It'd be good to have a natter about your plans for the future. I'd really appreciate that, Mum. Thank you. Bye, Mum. Bye, Jodie. Relax, Kate. It's good news, I hope. I've been reviewing your secondment here. We need manpower. You're a fully trained detective. I think I can make a case for extending your stay with us, assuming that appeals. Yeah, absolutely, Mum. Thank you. It's great working with you. Likewise, Mum. Night. Night. The overwriting was noted at every stage of the evidence being handled. It doesn't appear anyone was trying to cover it up. Still, we should make a confidential request to examine the original samples ourselves. It's a crucial item, and any irregularity... There's something to throw in Huntley's face. This isn't personal. She's at the centre of everything. I just want to get to the truth. Me too, mate. See you soon. Hey, Ros is asking for you. What's going on? Just got the report on the search of Hannah Resnikova's flat. Item reference AS9. The search of your flat detected banknotes in the sum of £5,900 concealed in a kitchen cupboard. 
Item reference MHM27. Search of your household waste. Detected multiple use condoms containing semen from multiple males. How do you account for these findings? No comment. Items reference JF3 to JF7. Examination of bed linen and bath towels detected DNA from multiple males, one of which matched control samples held in the police database, said DNA belonged to Timothy Ifield. What was Timothy Ifield doing in your bed, Hannah? No comment. Item reference AS24. The search detected an unregistered mobile phone. The locking of said phone provided a call history containing four calls between you and a number whose user we've been unable to identify. The first call occurring on the 16th of March and the last on the 18th of March. What was the nature of these calls? No comment. Hannah, we've got evidence strongly suggesting that you've been engaging in sexual activity for commercial gain. We've got calls on an unregistered phone that presumably you used to arrange these encounters. We've got evidence Timothy Ifield was present in your flat, presumably for sexual services. Now this unidentified, unregistered phone that you had calls with on four occasions, were these calls to and from Timothy Ifield? Hannah, wake up. We're carrying out an investigation into an unsolved murder now. If you didn't kill Timothy Ifield, telling us that this was a phone of his that we know nothing about yet, that would really help us. And it may help prove that you weren't his murderer. Hannah, frankly, right now for you, this is a lifeline. It was Timothy's fault. Brilliant, thank you. But I wasn't harming anyone. You have ruined my life. No, we protect life. Great. It's good work, guys. Just because they had sex doesn't mean Hannah killed Tim. True. But he invited her back to his flat. She hadn't been there before. We know that because we didn't detect any of her DNA or fingerprints in his flat. He gained her trust, lured her there to kill her. She killed him in self-defense. We're a whisker away from finding the evidence we'll need to charge her. It's all falling into place. The only hole is proving that Michael Farmer and Tim Ifield were accomplices, and then we've cracked the whole damn case. Yes, ma'am. We've got this lead now on Tim's burner phone. The chances are we're going to open up a whole new can of worms about what he was up to in the time around his death. Hopefully. Yeah. I'm afraid I've drawn a blank on taxis picking up from Tim Ifield Street on the night of the 17th. Right. But. I've been looking at traffic camera footage from that night. This is a junction a quarter of a mile from Tim's flat. I didn't spot a taxi, but I looked for vehicles resembling a minicab. This dark Mercedes E-Class saloon passes through at 2331, heading in the direction away from Tim's flat. And that here it is, earlier that evening at 1836, heading towards Tim's flat. Any chance we'll be able to read the ridge? I'll send the images for enhancement. I'll let you know the moment I hear back. Cheers, Monique. Well done. Uh, hold in. Anyone had further contact from Huntley's husband? Not that I know. I can't say I didn't give him a chance. You've reached Nicholas Huntley of Weber and Barrett Partners, LLP. Please leave a message. Mr. Huntley, DS Honor, AC12. We need to talk. You've excelled yourself, Rose. Thank you, sir. Trapdoor's been the toughest months of my life. I appreciate the backing you've given me, sir. You were a star in training college, then you put your family first. I'm only putting you back where you belong. Hey, what are friends for, hmm? Thank you very much, sir. Ah, sorry. Mr. 
Huntley, CS Honor, AC-12. We need to talk. He's gone to see Huntley's husband. Anything I can do? Image enhancement got a, a, a red number on the vehicle seen near Tim's flat. I need to tell Steve right away. Mr. Huntley, PSR not again. I was hoping you'd have come back to me by now on the matter we discussed. Uh, I've spoken to a colleague of mine, a criminal solicitor called Jimmy Lakewell. Well, I think it's best that you go through him. L-A-K... Mr. Huntley, are you refusing to cooperate with a lawful police investigation? Mrs. Honor, please leave a message. Sarge, we got a reg on the car. It belongs to a Nicholas Huntley. It was his husband. We need. Just call him again. Please leave a message. I'm outside your office. Wouldn't it be better to discuss all this face to face? Listen, Mr. Huntley, with respect to the 17th of March, we've got strong circumstantial evidence your wife wasn't a home as she claims. Ah, uh, um, I've got no comment to make. I'm giving you the opportunity to say something now before this gets extremely serious, not just for your wife, but for you too, sir. Steve, we need you to call in. Nick Huntley could be dangerous, OK? Nick Huntley could be dangerous. Call in. Please, you should talk to my solicitor. Going up to the fifth floor. L-A-K-E-W-E-L-L. Where she claimed she was that night. That night, your kids left a voicemail on your wife's phone asking permission to order a takeaway. If they're calling her, where were you? I'm thinking you weren't where you said you were. Huntley. Think about your answer. You've got one minute. I'm on my way up. Doors closing. You have five new messages. Message room. Sergeant, I got rent on the car. Five doors. Nicholas Hunt. Doors closing. <laughs> 